As we wind down the final weeks of 2019, I can't believe it, I bet that you are thinking about a fresh new vision for your life and work in 2020. Now, before you start mapping out your goals, I wanna share with you five powerful questions that you can ask yourself first to reflect back on what the last 12 months have helped you to learn and why it can ground you to feel clear about what you desire in the new year. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hi, I'm Lydia Lee, the life and work reinvention strategist, and I help passionate individuals to create meaningful work that supports the life that they want to build. So today's video topic is obviously very fitting for our end of year goals and dreaming and new visions for the new year. Uh, And I thought before you start getting into action plan mode is to actually take a nice and necessary pause right now, especially before we head into the busy hecticness of Christmas and the holidays, is to take a bit of time just for yourself to really think about and reflect about your year so that you can have a clean slate to really envision what it is that you want in your life for the new year and what this year has actually given you tons of insight and information and deep awareness if you choose to look at it uh, that can actually really support you in making really great and conscious decisions that are right for your life in the new year. All right, the first question to start asking yourself before you start mapping your goals is this. What am I most proud of in the last 12 months? It's so good to start acknowledging what you've accomplished, whether they are small or big wins, and to start to really think about how did I, who was I, and who did I become to be able to achieve some of the goals that I actually did accomplish this year? And think about that. It doesn't have to be a big, massive goal, and you don't have to beat yourself up for not reaching all the goals, but there are some things that you have done well for yourself. What are those things? What have you accomplished? And allow yourself to feel proud that there are things that you can count on yourself for. Now, when you can answer that question, right, what can you count on yourself for? What can you rely on yourself for? You start to really take notice of lots of things that um, you can bring forth to whoever you want to become in the next year. Now, I know when I think about that for myself, one of the things that I know I can count on myself for is kind of, I, I just don't really stop going when I'm trying to reach a goal. Even if I don't reach it perfectly, I know I'm built to keep researching, to keep going out there and figuring out what's right for me. You know, my mom will call it, you kind of like a dog with a bone. (laughs) And sometimes that could be quite irritating, I'm sure, for other people. But in terms of when I look at how that strength have allowed me to deal with obstacles and uh, any sorts of fears I've ever had in the past, and probably today as well, as I go and do bigger things with my life, I can hold true to the superpower that I possess and know that no matter what, I can rely on myself to keep going. So you have lots of strengths that you can sort of take stock on and using some of your experiences this year to evaluate some of those strengths and those skills and what maybe people have also been telling you that you're really, really good at that uh, is really helpful, right? For you to isolate some of those strengths and know, hey, I could bring this to whatever vision that I am creating for the new year. But the best of all is that you do take that pause to recognize yourself and acknowledge yourself for things that you know how to do, that you can be proud of yourself on. And I think that's a really great start uh, to really feeling good about bringing forth who you are to your new year. The second question to ask yourself right now is what have I learned about myself in the last 12 months? So what are some important things that you've realized about your needs, about what's important to you? And what is perhaps going through potential obstacles or difficult things that you've experienced this year taught you about what can be more supportive to the way that you wanna feel in your life and in your work? This also allows you to really think about your values. Um, Maybe when you've gone through this year, you've sort of realized that working hard right, has been part of your success, but how you approach that working hard, that hustle mentality, may not be what you might wanna bring into the new future. Or maybe that's just what I've been thinking about myself in the last 12 months. Now, I know when I answer this question for myself, I think a lot about my perfectionism 
And perfectionism also brews procrastination. <laughs> and I am definitely a queen of that uh, because I am a go-getter, I am a high achiever, and sometimes I can overthink myself to death before actually trying anything new. So one of the things that I learned a lot about myself is that like putting anything out there is good enough as it is and that I can refine and improve as I go. And even if my perfectionism brain starts to creep in to tell me it's not good enough, you can't release that yet, I can sort of tell her uh, that this is not the final time I get to improve on things. And actually putting it out there allows me uh, to really see things through, commit to things, and actually give myself the space to improve and make changes and pivot if it's really necessary. So knowing what you've experienced this year and what you've what is what that experience have taught you to realize about yourself, what things that you need, right? What supportive environments uh, or what has been lacking in your life, it's going to allow you to think and prioritize how you need to actually reach those goals in 2020. Sometimes what you might learn is that you don't want to do this alone. You don't want to do any of this life change or career pivots on your own and you need a better community or you need mentors or you need more positive people in your life, or you actually need more time and space and spaciousness in your schedule to actually implement some of the goals that you've been looking for. So taking that audit, all right, about what you've learned about yourself, what new values have emerged for you, uh, maybe some of your values might even have changed, is gonna help you to realize what's really important for you to focus on in the new year. The third question you should ask yourself right now is, what have I been avoiding or been feeling afraid to do. Now, it's a no shame zone here, and you should definitely create a no shame reflection for yourself as you answer this question. But it's great to really look at the reality of what were some of the things that you have really wanted uh, to go after or have accomplished in this year of 2019, and where did fear sort of creep in to hold you back, right, from something that you really wanted? And when you're able to reflect on this question, you start to really look at some of the real and perceived obstacles that might be getting in your way and have always gone uh, in the way. And what to notice about these obstacles. Perhaps you need more help around it. Perhaps you need to change your mindset around it. Perhaps you need a new approach in how you wanna solve a particular type of problem for yourself. Whatever that may be, that's gonna be really helpful for you to in a way, contemplate what will show up again in the new year and being able to assess right now when you're in sort of a neutral position, right, of reflection mode before the year ends and start to prepare almost um, a support system for that, right? So for me, for example, um, I've been really afraid to launch my new book in 2020. I know that because I'm a perfectionist and someone that uh, don't like to fail, going into new territory like book publishing is a pretty big deal for me. And I know I've been avoiding really putting the book in priority from in my projects because it's a, a really fuzzy place for me and I'm scared that I'm going to screw it all up. So what, I, what that's helped me to realize is that I'm gonna be avoiding things like talking about the book <laughs> until it's really ready to launch. And I would love to talk about the book more at this point now before it's even ready to go. And so in order for me to do that, I'm gonna need accountability. I'm gonna to need to join a book launch club, join other authors, talk to my colleagues and my, my friends and my family a lot more about what's going on with the book. And the most important thing is to ask for help. Again, with perfectionists and uh, people that are high achievers like me, um, asking for help kind of feels like failing. <laughs> and so I need, I, I need to do this differently in the new year, right? So those fears of um, becoming a, a joke, right? Or that my book wouldn't succeed, uh, or my message just won't land in the book. Now that can absolutely be um, eliminated when I actually share those ideas more often, uh, get to know some feedback, right? For the way I'm positioning my book. And then I can really actually take into account all the fresh ideas uh, that are coming my way and be able to actually showcase my book in the best light possible in the new year. So what have been some of the things that you've been avoiding or afraid to do? What do you think? Why do you think you've been avoiding them? What fears uh, come in the way and what has sort of reoccurred often for you that you can anticipate probably showing up again in the new year? And what sorts of support systems or solutions would you need to ask for help around or get support on in order to bypass those fears that keep you stuck where you are? So think about what real or perceived obstacles appear when you're about to step out of your comfort zone. 
What is the biggest sort of naysayer critic in your mind that will probably chirp at your ear the minute 2020 starts, you know, begins and you want to actually implement some of those goals? What can you anticipate could happen? And I think doing this exercise will allow you to just get real with some of these fears, even if they're embarrassing or you're like, God, I should be tougher than that. It's okay. You can start to parent yourself. You can start to create the right environments and support systems that can really help you to navigate some of those obstacles uh, to achieve your goals for real this time in the new year. The fourth question to start asking yourself right now is what will I say yes to in 2020? Now, in the land of yes could be the energy and the feeling of exploration, experimentation, and taking on the energy of curiosity. I know for a lot of us, we kind of want a sure thing and to be certain in the decisions that we're making. But sometimes what you might realize that you want to say yes to is actually just allowing yourself permission to play with ideas. Maybe even allowing yourself the permission to fail at times in order to get to the best version of your life and your work. So think about when you reflect on this question, um, when are you your most inspired self? When do you feel like, hey, I'm in the land of yes. If I can let myself feel this way or be in this place a lot more often, I know this is where my big ideas can brew from, right? Perhaps it's for me, for example, uh, I'm seeing a lot more yes to like physical activity and exercise and taking care of myself. Because I know that when I get working on a project or right? Implementing some big goals that I'm really excited to achieve. I can get really all consuming into making that happen and not, you know, because of, again, the dog with a bone analogy my mom gave me, right? Um, I won't stop until it's completed, which is a great superpower, but sometimes I might sacrifice my health and my mental wellness. And this year, I've been taking a lot more time off in traveling with my partner, meeting up with friends and family um, while, you know, adventuring around the world. And I've really realized that whenever I feel healthy and mentally um, well, and I have space in my schedule where I'm not just like putting things back to back, you know, and feeling productive because there's 18 things on my to-do list. I know when those things don't exist, I have space to really think about better ideas and actually really sink in and dig deep into what I really, really want in all the important areas of my life. And so I'm, I'm in my most inspired self when I feel healthy when I see my friends, when I take the time to be outdoors and go for a walk and turn off the electronics, right? And be present in the relationships that are really important to me. And maybe for you, it's about actually being around, you know, people and ideas and circumstances and events and experiences that light you up, that inspire you to be a bigger person and a better person in your life, to inspire you to start that business that you want to start or make those big changes in your life that you really want to have. And being around that information, you know, being around those types of people helps you to actually step into your leadership, right? And who you want to become. So what do you want to experience more of in 2020 that allows you to say more yeses? right? I would love for you to share it with me um, underneath this comment on this video, because the idea to say yes is going to open up all this expansion of to look for those very things that allow you to say yes, right? Some of that might actually be, you know, things that you allow yourself to consume in the new year or allow your time to be spent and your energy to be committed to or reserved for so that you can actually find space to explore fresh new ideas for your new year. And finally, the fifth question to start asking yourself right now before mapping out your goals in 2020 is the opposite of the last question. (laughs) What will you say no to in 2020? Now, I really love this question because in the sort of busy world we live in today where we're all about doing, 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 um, we probably have to say a lot more no's than yeses, right? In order to carve out time and space for ourselves, for our dreams and the things that are most important to us. So I want you to think about what are the sort of circumstances or environments, right? That um, have you feeling disempowered or de-energized, right? What are those things in your life that you might be committing to that isn't bringing you closer to some of the goals that you might be thinking about for yourself in the new year? And what do you want to stop doing more of to get more of what you want, right? Sometimes we are the obstacle. We are the ones that have been preventing ourselves 
uh, from achieving our goals. Sometimes it's a mindset issue. Sometimes we have self-confidence or self-doubt issues, right? And sometimes we have to just take note of what it is that we keep repeating to ourselves that's planting the seed of the reality that we're living. So here's a nice time to take that pause to really think about what do I no long, what do I want to let go of? What do I want to actually say thanks for that and I've experienced that about myself, but I no longer want to take this on, you know, for the new life that I want to design for myself in the new year. So for me, what I'm saying no to is perfectionism, as I mentioned, right? So a lot of times I tend to never put an idea out there uh, until it feels perfect. Now, of course, I've been working on this for many years uh, and I've done a lot with that perfection perfectionism mongering monster. But I also know that is an attitude and a pattern that keeps emerging for me, right? So for me, being able to say no to perfectionism helps me to really think about when are the times that, are, that I am a perfectionist? What are other alternative ways for me to put my ideas out there before, with, before investing time and money into something specific right away? Where can it be sort of easy and looser in the feelings where I can actually just share these ideas in a non-pressuring way and get feedback or really see how they land for me and for other people? Uh, before I decide that this is the project that I'm really gonna back. So that sense of just curiously being interested in something, writing about it, maybe doing a video like this on it and allowing that idea to spread without actually committing to it right away is a way for me to actually do this without feeling a sense of perfectionism. So when you think about some of your potential goals and vision that you have set for yourself in 2020, what do you think you might need to pivot and change within yourself in order to achieve those goals? Are there more boundaries maybe that you might need in your life? Now, I know for me at times, I tend to give a lot to people in my personal life. And I put myself last in certain ways because I am kind of a people pleaser. I like seeing people happy. And sometimes I forget that I'm also an important person that really needs to be happy in order to do the work that I do and have the energy that I have for my clients, right? And the business that I'm passionate about. So having boundaries of uh, not having a fully open schedule for anyone to just dip into whenever they feel like it, right? Um, having specific days that I really want to work and what days I want off and actually don't not allow myself to be consumed by my projects, right? Um, and saying no to people pleasing, right? Allows me to, again, be able to love the people I love with proper healthy boundaries put in place so I can serve them and serve myself in the balance of it all. So share with me, what will be something you would like to say no to, right? What do you want to stop doing uh, stop doing so that you can get more of what you want in the new year? I would love to hear your insights. I hope you've enjoyed these five powerful questions to ask yourself before you start mapping your goals for 2020. I think it'll be a really grounding exercise for you to do this. Uh, and I'm also attaching a link at the bottom of this description of the video uh, to give you access to a document that you can fill in on your own and start taking that reflection on your own time. And I know that when you take the time to ground yourself, to reflect deeply about your experience in this year and help to use that information, right, to design and plan a new fresh vision for the new year, it's going to be so much more effective and it's going to feel more like something you've taken time to, you know, put into feeling out that clarity, really understanding what you want and why and being able to actually take stock of your year and feel complete when you end this year, that there's some important lessons you've learned that you're bringing into a fresh new vision for the new year. Thanks so very much for joining me again for this week's episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. And again, your feedback, your suggestions for new videos or any topic that I can create for you, uh, please let me know in the comments below so that I can serve you better uh, in this channel and allow uh, more answers to come to you so that you can feel more confident to reinvent your life and work. Have an amazing holiday and lots of... Um, you know, intimacy and personal relationships that you can get to do more of those things for the holiday season. Uh, and I hope that you take the time to also uh, make time for yourself because I know how busy the holiday season can be. And I think being able to uh, put yourself in priority during such a hectic season is going to make you feel mentally prepared uh, to really tackle it and 
help you to also prepare for what you, you need personally for your new year. Thanks so much for joining me. Ready to work for yourself but have no idea where to begin? I'll show you how. Learn how to create a self-employment plan with work you can love with the Work Reinvented course. It's time to stop wondering if there's a bigger, more meaningful way to enjoy your life and work. There is. There is.